trying to take your time. You don't need no pulled hamstrings. You don't need, you don't need none of that. Test on two. I say I don't need to see Gary on the on the floor right now holding his hip. Yeah. He said he said he said he ran the marathon yesterday, so he had to take his time. <laughs> Gary, you ran the marathon? You ran a marathon yesterday? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Grant, for being patient. Open up for questions for Grant. Start with Abby. Let's start with the news of the day. What was it like yesterday uh, celebrating Marcus winning Defensive Player of the Year? And yeah. How did you guys get him out of, like, how, what was the ruse? Yeah, we just watched film prior, and then um, he may say, watch stand back. We got to watch a little bit more on some guys, see what you can do a little bit better on these scenarios and communicating, like, as point guard stuff, you know? And we kind of all just walked out because none of us really knew. And then we saw everybody kind of gather together. And we looked at the, the what do you want to call it, Audi? What's the, what's the, first bit? I don't know. The thing that holds the big um, post board. So next thing you know, um, he comes out. And we were like trying to like not make it seem obvious because Gary's standing right there. And then we're all just kind of huddled together. And then it was, it was dope to see not only just the recognition that he deserves because he works extremely hard. He's been in the league for eight years, hounding dudes. And been one of those guys that if you ask anyone in the league, it's not, not fake news. It's not one of those where it's like, all right, he doesn't deserve it. It's one of those where like everybody respects it. So um, it's a good shout to not only him, but shows a testament to how, how this, this team has grown over the years, I feel like, because – um, when you start having a little bit more success winning together, you start getting the more recognition. And that's a testament to the two, three, four, four, five guys that we have that have been here for the longest, Smart, Jason, Jalen, um, Al coming back, Tice. You know, uh, it's great to see them guys, you know, get the recognitions they deserve. And hopefully it's not the, the end of it. You know, JT still um, all NBA first team, um, without a doubt. And then um, Al still should be all defense, same with Rob. Same with uh, JB, probably deserves a reward. Like, you, you look down the line and you look, and you may necessarily know it wasn't a coach of year finalist, but um, he's definitely in that conversation of one of the best young coaches in the league. So, um, just thankful to have not only Smart get the recognition, but we got to, you know, prove, prove that as we continue through these playoffs. Taking some pride. I mean, you, you stumped for him pregame that one day. What's that? You taking some pride? You stumped for Marcus. You pushed for this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't take any pride, you know. It's it's not not me that's out there doing doing that doing that job. That's all smart. So um, I just try to help any way I can. As a team, is there some gratification? I mean, um, being the number one defense and all of that, but seeing the recognition. Yeah, it's one of those things that as a team um, you kind of just appreciate, you know, because oftentimes you know it goes to around the league maybe one thing or another. You don't necessarily get those awards, so. Um, to see that for a guy, especially like Smart, who puts his heart and soul every single night to every single game, uh, it just it just shows a little bit of um, like love that that I feel like we we give him every single day, but it shows a little love national nationally as something that I feel like it has has been a long time coming. So um, excited to see see that. Hopefully, that's one of many more, and um, let's continue this training moving forward. Grant, you guys were in that spot a lot this year that you were in in game one where you got the 15 point lead and it just, you know, starts disappearing there. What, what did you learn about handling those moments? Like, what are you guys saying to each other in a spot like that where the lead's disappearing? You know, what are you talking about in timeouts? Yeah, the biggest thing is we know they're going to make a run eventually, as good as that team is. It's the, the teams are in this league. Um, it's not going to be all all rose petals and 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 good giggles, you know. It's one of those things where you know they're going to make their run. It's just a matter of staying together, um, executing what we need to execute. We kind of stalled out offensively towards the end of that game. So for us, it's just a matter of staying physical, staying true to to the game plan, and understanding that we're, we've been in these situations, like you said before, and we're going to be in them again. It's one of those things you can't control. So. Um, you gotta you gotta compete throughout the last whistle and JT JT and Smart and those guys and White Dayton White 
um, Al and JB who are on the court those last couple of minutes. They did a phenomenal job of staying poised. Kyrie, obviously, he's going to hit some tough shots every once in a while, but what do you guys need to do better to shut off the, the easier ones? Yeah, Kyrie, one of the best players, you know, in the league um, in terms of especially shot creation and ability. So um, you just kind of have to do a great job of containing him. Um, he's going to get to his spots, you know. So it's a matter of making sure that as a team we're aware and not giving the easy ones, the easy layups, the ones that you allow him to see the ball go through the basket to hopefully feel more confident uh, is taking those same shots. Uh, the three balls that you kind of shake and raise, those guys, you want to take those away. So um, it's, uh, it's about understanding that he's going to make tough shots. You can't complain about those ones. We can't give him the easy ones that allow him to now feel comfortable and confident enough to know that the tough shots are even easier and, and more likely to go in. The physicality you guys played with against Durant, um, what's kind of the message there in making things tough for him? And, and then, you know, on the flip side of that, doing it without foul. And I think all your bigs picked up two fouls before the first quarter ended. Yeah. Uh, in game one. Yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a tightly called game in the first half. We kind of unexpected that. It's one of those playoff environments where you know it's going to be tightly called and then kind of dies out as time goes on. So uh, it was a little more physical second half. We understood that. And KD, one of the best players in terms of uh, just in game in history. So uh, we have to do a phenomenal job of staying into him because everything has to be tough. Not only just him walking up and down the court, but him trying to just – get a cup of water on the sideline. If you can be in his face, like some, some way, somehow you got to take him off his rhythm, take him out of his game. And he's going to be aggressive. We all know Kevin Durant. We all know the fact that um, after losses, he averaged what 40 plus points a game when they play. So we know he's going to come out being aggressive in game two. And we know that we have to be prepared not only to, to withhold that, but also understand that we, we can't let tough shots that he hits affect us mentally going on the other end or our defense and understand that, um, as a team, we, we trust one another to make individual plays. We also have to have each other's back. So um, it's one of those things that KD is going to be KD, Kyrie is going to be Kyrie, and we have to understand that it's going to be tough, but that's what we love about playoff basketball, you know? If it was easy, you don't want to be in it. So uh, exciting, competitive, and it's going to be an exciting game too. I don't know if this is in the box score, but was his water intake down in game one? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I couldn't tell you that, but all I know is that um, we did a good job, but it's not going to be like that every every game, every series. Um, he's he's not a guy that necessarily has droughts like that or cold streaks. So we understand that we cannot expect him to score what – he still had, what, 20-plus point, points anyway. So we can't expect him to go 9, 20, nine for 25 every game. So um, it's one of those things that Kyrie had a phenomenal game. KD had a good game, you know, but not KD – like we know how KD is. So we understand that we have to be better. Um, there's a lot of room for improvement. And as a team, we understand that it's not over. You guys usually would kind of like stay underneath and switch up towards him, but you were a lot of the time just like trying to get in front of him and feeding him into drop coverage. So do you feel like you kind of surprised them with the way you were covering him? And do you feel like you have to continue to evolve to stay ahead of him? Um, yeah, we just have to continue to adapt, continue to evolve. Um, Game plan wise, it's just a matter of executing it. Um, I don't know what coverage necessarily we had him in the rest of the whole game, but I knew that we were just into his body, making sure that we were under him, making sure that the physicality of play was there. And we know not many guys can can block his shot up top. Um, not many guys can even get a shot down low. So it's just a matter of making sure that you show he sees the crowd and making sure that all the other guys around them understand we're going to in their airspace as they catch the ball, you know, because um, KD, he's going to create and make tough shots, and then he's going to make tough passes too sometimes. So uh, we just have to do a better job of not only keeping the ball in front of us and keeping a, uh, a good help behind us, but also getting getting out to guys like Gorn and those guys who make, made shots last game, keeping them off the glass. Grant, after we talked uh, after game one, you were pretty amped up about this. I know you said it's not over, but just how confident are you in this group right now in the direction that you're headed? Absolutely. Um, I trust this group with anything. You know, it's one of those things where I wouldn't want to bring any other guys to the wars with me, you know, because this, this group has each other's back. This group's going to fight to the last whistle, to the last breath. So um, it's one of those things that we stay together. Throughout the ups and downs, we stay together through the pains and and 
and the the glory like we like we have experience with smarts decoy but um it's a matter of understanding that this is not, one game doesn't dictate a series one game doesn't um win you the nba finals you know so for us it's about understanding what our goal is understanding that it's not going to take just one night to make us feel good it's going to it's going to be a grind throughout the whole thing right how do you deal you said earlier about the physicality and the officiating was tight early how do you kind of deal with that i mean because in the first couple of plays you're like okay this is going to get called tight how do you adjust to that because game two could be totally different with a new crew than game one absolutely you have to adapt um you have to see how the game is being called that night some nights you're going to see foul calls early and then they're not going to call them in the second half some nights there are going to be fouls throughout the whole way some nights there are going to be no fouls so it's just a matter of understanding that with one another, we have the, the the depth, we have the ability, so we have to implement our play style. But if the game is being called a certain way, we have to adapt to how the game is called um, because we understand that each player matters. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you can't control what the referees say, do, like call. So for us, it's just a matter of staying with one another, understanding that if this game can be called tight, we can adapt to that. If the game is being called physically, we can be physical, you know? I know during the regular season, you have conversations constantly with the officials. It's not always complaining. It's just sometimes getting things straight. Can you do that in the playoffs? Or are they like, Grant, I'm not trying to hear you right now. How does that go? I feel like either way, I'm going to talk. So um, I, at the end of the day, I feel like those guys, the, these are the best crews that we're going to have all year. You know, they, they, they work through it out the entire regular season to get to the playoffs. So it's a credit to them. And we understand that uh, no one's perfect. And we can't expect them to be perfect. So um, that's why most of the stuff is conversation. It's not us yelling or screaming, you know, dis dis like disrespecting, you know, because um, these are the best officials in the league. And for us, it's just a matter of understanding that, yes, they might have saw something differently than we did. And they may go see it at halftime and come out to us and say, hey, I missed that one. Or, hey, I think you still fouled him. And we have to accept that, you know. So, um when it comes to conversation, I'm probably going to still be the same way. Um, not the type to yell unless I, I, I advocately know for a fact. So uh, most times I'm just going to joke around and hit them with the, oh, you really think so? Like kind of be under the skin, but they know that about me. They know I'm a goofy guy. So I don't think they take it that personally. One more. Okay. Can you take us to the final play, your view? And then did you know it was good at the buzzer? And then everybody, I think the first guy that got to Jason was like Matt Ryan. Yeah. Like, were you are you the dude that runs out? Or are you the dude that tries to get everybody to stay on the bench to, to avoid a ten? Like, what was your when I saw it went zero zero? That's when I stepped on the court. Um, but the play itself, you know, we got the defensive stop. Um, we did a good job on you know getting get, getting Kyrie to try and get the ball out of his hands. He hit KD and he made he almost made a tough shot. We finished but playing for rebound and in that scenario, you got to play kind of how it is and transition is probably your best opportunity than rather that defense is set. So as it went on, you're kind of like watching like, okay, who's going to shoot it? Like you thought JB was when he beat, and then you see three guys cut him off, like Bruce Brown, those guys cut him off and, gets, and they hit smart. And you're like, oh dear, like he might hit a game winning three. Shot fakes and both dudes fly by him. So you're like, all right, how much time is left? I looked at the clock. By then he throws it to JT. He does like a pirouette and lays it up and the clock runs out. And that's when I was still kind of in shock that, the ball went in and everybody was on the court by then. So I was just over there hyping the crowd up, you know, because I knew I wasn't going to get the JT. I knew I wasn't going to be able to, like, tackle those guys. So I was just like, let's let's have some fun, you know, and then uh, dap them up afterwards and say, and dap each, each one of them up because that's a, a competitive playoff win against a talented Brooklyn Nets team. So um, hopefully, you know, the excitement like that isn't every single night. Hopefully we can get some good ones, good wins, you know, where it's one of those not buzzer beaters. But if it is, let's just have some more fun. Grant, this is the, the first time for you that you've had, you know, a true home court advantage in, in a best of seven series, given, you know, what happened at the pandemic and fighting through what happened last year, being, being the road team. How do you feel you, you feed off the energy of the crowd? What's the importance to you? of maintaining home court advantage before you head to Brooklyn? Yeah, um, our, our our fans, you know, they're some of the best in the league, honestly, because not only are they going to kind of rip the other team, but they're going to have our back through it. You know, it's one of those things where we make a run, that building, they might have to call a timeout because they might not be able to get a playoff. You know, quarterbacks sometimes tap the helmet where they're like, I can't hear a single thing, just kind of go wherever this audible is, kind of what I have to go to. So, um, 
I think that Boston Garden fans, you know, it's one of those things that as a, as a player growing up watching, like you admire the fact that like when KG in that, that era, you know, how much Boston fans really made an impact. And they have been that way since I was a kid and they feel that way now. So having that advantage is huge. Um, we understand that we are way more exciting. You know, we still have our fans on the road because Boston fans show up. That's when the, like Tennessee Balls fans back in the day, I used to say they're going to be there one way or the other. So, um, but we understand that our home court is our home court and we have to protect it. They had asked about your, your confidence. Having lived through a, a really similar situation one year ago, you know, what did you learn from that or, or maybe how night and day is it from the matchup that was in the first round last year? Yeah, that's one of those things where you learn that one game, like you said, you win one, it may not dictate the whole series. We won game three, well, I think game three last year, game, game three, game four, and next thing you know, we ended up losing five. So, like, you might win one game, but you have to win the next one, the next one after that. It's not just a one-night ordeal. So, um, for us, it's just a matter of understanding they're, they're a talented players. Um, they're a different team than they were last year um, in terms of personnel and everything else, and so are we. So, it's just a matter of kind of battling, and that's what it's going to take, a war, and we got to prevail. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Appreciate your time.